car interiors are often forgotten when you shoot cars. I mean, you take some interior pictures here and there, but you never really focus on them. So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven tips on how to improve your car interior photography. And after I gave you all these tips, I'm gonna walk around the car and actually shoot it. And I'm gonna take you with me and walk you through how I shoot a car step by step. So let's get started. Tip number one is to use a wider lens because as you might've noticed, cars are a confined space. So the wider your lens, the more you can get into your frame. So I wouldn't really recommend anything above 50 millimeter. That doesn't mean you could make it work, but it just makes things harder. And with a wider lens, you can get different kind of shots and you're just more flexible. The best is to use a 24 to 70. You can get all the shots you want to take, but it can be expensive. So maybe use some prime lenses, some cheaper ones, but a wider lens will definitely benefit you when shooting car interiors. Tip number two is to focus on the details. Car interiors are full of details, so try to capture them. Focus on the, on the badges, logos, interesting materials, and depending on the owner, personalized stuff. So what I would recommend is to just take a seat in the car, especially if it is one you aren't familiar with, and just take a look at the car, think of which details you want to capture. Tip number three is about your aperture. So unlike car exterior shots, you can step down your lens in interiors without a problem. One, because you probably need the light, especially if it's a day like this, like overcast, almost raining, foggy and whatnot. Then you get extra light and you also get that creamy background and like real focus on the detail. But when you take like shots from the overall interior, then you don't want to step it all the way down because then you get the same problem like with exterior shots that only parts of your image are in focus. Tip number four is to use foreground in your pictures and that is because when you add foreground to your picture it adds way more depth and makes it look more interesting. So for example when I take a shot of the steering wheel like this just like standard shot without foreground it looks okay these shots have their place too but when you add foreground to it it just gives the picture way more depth and makes it look way more interesting. So use foreground and make your shots way better. So it's really getting cold, so I'm starting to wear my gloves. And tip number five is to shoot through the windshield. You know, like some cars have like a logo or something else embroidered on the headrest or on the seat itself. And that is what you want to capture with this. So you take your camera in the ideal world, because right now the conditions are like terrible. It's super dark in general, and you can't really see anything that's going on inside the car. It's raining, so it just makes this shot like impossible right now. So what you want to do, so you take your camera, put on a CPL because that's really important to cut out the reflections in the windshield and shoot this detail from outside through the windshield. This looks super interesting and super unique because many people don't get this kind of shot. And I actually just noticed that I forgot to take this shot when I shot Anton Naumann's E36 drift build. I'm gonna put an example picture on here. So I can't really show you an example from me, but I'm gonna put an example from North Borders up here. So take these shots when you can and definitely write them down on your shot list. If you're getting some good tips and get your value out of this video, then go ahead and hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so on to tip number six. I know it's gonna sound weird, but get in the trunk. Hear me out. So with this car, I don't want you to get in the trunk because it's kind of unnecessary because it has like a good accessible back seat. But with cars like an Audi TT, like I shot a while ago, then the back seats are really not usable and you can't really get a good perspective out of them. So what I did is I opened the trunk, crawled into it and took like the whole interior shot out of the trunk. And with cars like this, you really want to do that because you get a way better perspective of like the whole dashboard and the steering wheel and seats. I know it's gonna look weird and it's gonna feel weird, but the shot will be very nice. Tip number seven is to get macro shots. If you have a macro lens, that's perfect. Go ahead and use that. But if that's not in your budget, use macro rings like I'm doing right now. I have a dedicated video about these and I'm gonna link that down in the description. So the reason why you wanna do macro shots is because they look super unique. Most people don't use macro shots for car photography more like interior car photography, but you can get like really interesting shots like of stitches and badges and they look really unique. So go ahead and use them and stick out. 
So now that you have all the tips, I'm just gonna go around the car and take some photos and walk you through how I do it. And by the way, it's getting really cold. I'm starting to wear my hat. I have to have my jacket open because of the microphone. And uh, also these gloves are like perfect. Okay, so I usually start with the steering wheel. So I'm also gonna start with that now. And for the steering wheel, I use more like 50 millimeters when I shoot from the outside. Also, because if you come around, you want to use the foreground. So I usually use like the door seal here as foreground and shoot something like this here. Maybe even zoom in and use foreground like this. Also change the perspective by going a bit low and using more like the white from the car Okay, so usually I don't really get more shots from the outside of the steering wheel like this, except for when I use like the door. That's also a very nice trick is to just go down to like 50 to 35 millimeters, use the door and create like a peak. And so you can have like a more foreground. It's also very interesting when you use a car that doesn't have like these edges around the window and you can roll the window a bit down and have like a different kind of reflection in the shot, in the shot as well. Then I usually move over to getting inside the car and then take some shots of the same wheel like this. Also using foreground and by the way, it's like super foggy and I really like the look you get out of the of these kind of shots. Also use foreground of the seat, maybe from like over here. Also change up the perspective. And by the way, I'm shooting most of our shots in portrait because I post nearly all of them on Instagram. So that's my preferred aspect ratio. Aspect ratio, do you call that? It's just orientation of my photos. Also use foreground like this, like I've shown you before. So let's move on to seats. If you look at it, the seats have, because this is an S-line car, it has like this S-line stamped into the seat. That's like the detail I want to capture, or like if the car has like a interesting kind of stitching. So the way I usually start is by having the door like slightly closed and using like the A-pillar and the door as foreground. So I'm gonna move over here. Usually I zoom in here because like the rest of the seat isn't really that spectacular and I wanna fo really focus on that detail. So I'm gonna here. and use that nice foreground. Just, especially when you have a zoom lens, play around with the focal length. You can switch that up very quickly and just get like as many different shots as, as you can. So next up, I'm gonna ditch the foreground. Okay, it's better to shoot from here. Just without foreground, pure seed, but it's, I don't really like these kind of shots, but they have their place too. So the next thing I'm going to shoot now are like these logos and the door seals. I have like stuff over here. And for that, I usually shoot at like 50 mil or even tighter. Okay, so the next thing like details in the interior, like I have like this, also this S-line badge over here and from the shift knob. Also a sh shot you really should get is like a top down shot of the shift knob. These can be pretty difficult to get, especially if you want it to be symmetrical. 
so I see the light is a bit better for the details on the seat right now. So um, bumping the ISO to really over the limit I really want to go on like at ISO 2000 now. But it's really dark outside today, so I'm gonna have to do that now. Okay, so with this, as I said, you should go nice and wide. And also, if you can, don't overdo it with your aperture. I'm gonna bump it up to like f4.5, go down with the shutter speed to kinda not have to skyrocket my ISO. I usually shoot these kind of shots in landscape because you just get more into the frame and you can also post these as like the continuous post on Instagram. And also interesting shot to get is like from the steering wheel right here with like both the seats in the foreground and more like a wider shot. Okay, I think that's gonna be it. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. And if you like this video, make sure to watch this video as well. It's about leveling up your exterior car photography. So check that out and we'll see you in the next video.